What if I told you that you can find information about anything or anybody online by just relying on free information? Well, as you may have guessed it, this is an OSINT video. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about open source intelligence and how you can just leverage some of these free data, specifically using Google, social media, or even government websites to find information about a specific target. That target varies depending on what you do. Personally, as an ethical hacker and bug bounty hunter, I rely on OSINT usually to find people that work for a company or maybe even just find domains and subdomains that belong to a specific organization. But OSINT goes beyond that. It's not just looking at websites. You can just look for phone numbers and things like that. And it just also plays a role in personal hygiene and how you protect yourself online. But obviously, OSINT is just way beyond that. It goes beyond just assets and digital assets online for organization. You can abuse images, you can abuse social media, and you can just do a lot of different things based on just public accessible data to find information about your target, as I mentioned earlier. Before we jump into the video, please do me a favor. This is all for educational purposes. If you're using any of these techniques, please make sure you're doing them ethically and not doing them for anything foul or doing anything wrong. And to make it easier, I'm actually going to use a CTF on hackingup.io. It just gives us a little bit of structure with how we're going to approach every one of these techniques that I want to cover. And then also gives us an objective and things to look for. So if you want to follow along, this hub is free. You can just go on hackingup.io, sign up and use it. Enough about that. Let's jump into the video and see this CTF. As always, remember this CTF is absolutely free. All you have to do is go to hackinghub.io, create an account and launch into VolnOS. And once you click open, it's going to bring you to this website. Usually for an OSINT, when there's a website involved, what I like to do is just start at the website layer and kind of collect information based on what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. And Usually I'll take some notes. It's what I call light notes. It's just me having a kind of like an index of everything that I have found so far. So I'm going to open my, my text editor here and we're just going to use this as a part of our notes. So the first thing that we're going to look at on this website is that the scope of this for the CTF or for this challenge is this website. So any subdomains that we find is going to go behind this dedicated instance. So subdomain.publicctf.io. Whatever I find here is going to go there. The second thing is that they are giving us an OSINT domain. In this case, with Hacking Cup, when we give you a domain, it just simply means that, hey, look into this. This is also a part of the challenge. So I'm just going to put these in here as a part of our domains. I know that the doesn't look pretty, but pretty doesn't need to be. But we're just going to make it work. So I'm just going to put this here. And now we have a list of all domains. So the next thing I want to do is I want to quickly look at this website that they've given us. Again, I kind of know what the CTF is about, so it's easier for me to draw conclusions. But when I do a CTF with like a conference and things like that, it's a similar approach. I look for clues and things that could kind of give me an understanding of what's going on. First thing I see on this website is an image. I'm going to copy the image address and just go into the text edit and say images now. And I'm going to make it like that. And now we have a domains right here and we have our images. Looking at a first glance at this image, anytime there is some information given to me when I'm looking for a specific bit of information, I like to make sure I analyze everything. At a first glance, this looks like it's a stock photo, but if we zoom in, there is some code. And honestly, I love these kinds of photos, especially when it comes down to looking at an organization. Every photo could become a piece of clue. And in this case, you can see some code, maybe somewhere here. There is some file that give us some information. In this case, there's nothing there, but we'll keep this for a later time because I know sometimes things may come in handy later. Uh, and just to get this website, there is no uh, real address. And when we go to about, we can see that there is uh, a bit of information about this uh, Volnois International or Oxford Software International. And we have the name of this person. So I'm just going to go back into her and put a uh, person of interest. We can do... Uh, maybe persons and we can write in their name. So we know this person is a part of this company and it says that they were founded in 1998. So important dates is something to look at. A lot of times uh, dates could be a good place to maybe guess for a pin number, maybe look for a password reset functionality. And this looks like it's an important date uh, for the company. So I'm just going to put company here. Uh, this is where the company was founded. And looking at this, it looks like the rest of this is just some uh, random text and uh, this is all we know so far cool now the second thing we want to look at is this domain uh, obviously this one isn't going to load from my assumption we're just going to try it out 
nothing loads but oh it does load it goes to our hacking up site again but there's nothing here that we could do but what's interesting about this is looking at OSINT data and available sources about this domain so number one thing that i like to do usually is just opening up my terminal and just doing a who is on this so the reason why i do a who is here is i want to see if this domain is using some sort of a privacy guard where they they pretty much take away all the information belonging to that company so uh if they have used it then you can see there is a, a privacy email right here that doesn't help us out but sometimes people forget to turn this on and it leaks their maybe full name maybe the company email their phone number and so on but based on this i'm going to assume none of these are really really uh important uh, i'm just going to look at this really quickly to make sure uh maybe we can look up this domain just to make sure our conclusions that we're drawing make sense it looks like it is a registry for the uk domain so there's nothing there really but what we can do also is just do a bit of OSINT on this domain. So I like to use something like a search transparency. Uh, you can use search SH, you can use any of those other engines. I like to do this website specifically. You've probably seen on my other content how much I use this and we'll plug that in and it looks like there is a domain available here. And if we go to it, I'm gonna assume it doesn't load. But my assumption here is that if I uh, put this domain here, we can probably use that in uh this context so it goes behind the dedicated instance for this hub so if i go to it it looks like there is a flag and we have found our first osint domain so that's just the osint part of looking for subdomains based on publicly accessible data uh, for dns entries that somebody else has done so this is pretty much subdomain osint if you watch my content you probably have seen a million of these different examples and if you haven't go to my uh, channel and look for them and you will see a lot of them so this is step one we have all of these domains, but now I want to find references to these. I'm going to do a little bit of Google dorking. That just means we're going to leverage Google into finding information. If you want a full video on Google dorking, go to my channel and look for it. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to say maybe something like site, which means it's going to narrow down our search to any sites that have this uh, in the host name. If that doesn't work. We can do something like maybe in text. So any text that has Vuln OS and it looks like a couple of other OSINT websites like c99.nl that gives you subdomain data and then this webmail uh, serve that I don't know what it is, but nothing really that interesting, uh, nothing here to do, but it's just uh, Google Dorking is always one that I use anything that I'm looking for. The other thing that we can do with Google is kind of doing a reverse image so we can give it a link. I'm gonna give it this image right here and it's going to fetch the image and it's going to see where else it's showing up. It looks like uh, a bunch of stock photos that isn't really helpful for us i'm going to go back to this website and look for the other image that we saw which is the founder's image so i'm going to copy the image address uh ceo image do this we're going to do stock photo for this one and i'm going to go back to google and do a reverse image on this and look up for this and see if it shows up anywhere else it's going to analyze it it looks like this didn't have anything either one of the things that's really cool about this specifically is when you're looking at an image there are three things that you want to kind of pay attention to one is the actual image what are the contents of this image what is it showing us is there any information in the background maybe we can find a building where we, we can find out where they hang out all the time but in this case there's nothing there the second thing is where does it show up a lot of times you can identify social media accounts you can find websites that have been linked to maybe you can find an interview where maybe their birthday or their email or something is leaked and then the third one with these images is just looking at the uh data the metadata for it so we're going to do that next and see what we can find maybe we can find a location of where this image was taken to do that we can use a bunch of uh, cli tools i like to use some of these websites just for the ease of accessibility what we're going to do here is we're going to quickly just upload our image into this and we're going to see what it's going to give us it looks like it's going to give us some uh gps location so this is where the photo was taken and uh there's nothing else here there's no phone data nothing else i'm going to click this though to see where it's going to take us and it looks like this is going to take us to uh this specific address which we could assume maybe this is uh the home or maybe something of importance to us it looks like it may be a home where this person resides obviously this is fake uh, for the sake of the ctf but we do have an address now of some sort so we can do uh addresses here or locations even and now we have a location we have uh the address we have uh the city and we have the zip code for it as well so now we have all this information there's nothing we can do about this just yet one of the things that we can do going back to our website is actually looking for this webmail right here and seeing if 
uh, we can do a password reset. So I'm going to go back to our notes. We have our person's name right now. A lot of times, even if it doesn't tell you that it's a first name, dot last name, it's safe to assume a lot of companies do this based on the first initial last name, first initial dot last name or the other way around. There's always some sort of a combination like that, but you can just assume that that's kind of usually how they do it, which in this case, we have the first dot last name and it says it's just at vonos.co.uk. And then we don't know what the password is. We can try weird things like password or the company name, but let's see if we can do a password reset and what it requires. So if we go to it, it looks like there are security questions that we need to find. One of them is being the postcode, which I assume we have somewhere here. And the second one is a telephone number that we have to look for. And that's a good hint. We know our objective now is to find this person's phone number. Uh, so let's go and look at one of the things that I do a lot of times when I'm looking for even for an employee, maybe for a company where I'm doing bug bounties or some sort of a red team activity. So go on social media, I open it up. I know you can see I'm searching for Naham sake, but we can start looking for people's names, for example. So if I look this person up, are they going to come up? It looks like someone looks like it does come up, but let's assume this person didn't come up, uh, which is great right now. We have them, we know who this person is, but the other approach is to kind of look for these websites and see if maybe vonos.co.uk, that one more time, is it going to come up? It looks like it doesn't come up in any of the tweets, or actually it does. If you go to latest, it does show us that this person that we just saw has tweeted about this company and we have found their social media username. So we can go here and do social media username. And then we can also go a step further by going back to our Google search really quickly and seeing if this username stands out anywhere. It looks like some things come up, but I don't want to click on any of these in case to have some private information of a real person with that name or a similar name. But it looks like this username exists in other areas. And this is how I would usually either use a tool to find their Instagram, TikTok, you know, whatever other social media is there. But for now, I think for this CTF, we have what we needed. And uh, we see there's another flag right here that we can use for uh, the CTF itself. But now looking at this, it looks like they were going to Vegas in sometimes in January or February of 2022. And it looks like they took a new keyboard photo. And if we click on it, as I was saying that earlier is there's always a bit of clue. Uh, if we open this photo itself, uh, not much on this side, but at the bottom right, there is a passport and there is also, uh, let's see, there is also right here, a company where they're using their travel for. So if I, you know, put this right here as well we have a volnair.co which i'm going to try and see if it opens up but then we also have this right here which is the qr code and with qr codes the cool thing is that we can see what the data for it is so i'm going to look quickly for a qr code reader maybe use this one and we are going to upload an image so i'm just gonna do a screenshot of this like that and then drop it in here and it looks like this gives us some data. Obviously, a lot of times this may not be valid with a lot of airlines, but again, every bit of information in a photo could be used as a clue. But now we do have a little bit of more information. So I'm gonna put that under Vuln Air right here so we have it. Uh, hopefully we can make this look a little nicer. There we go. Uh, let's see what Vuln Air looks like. So if I go to vulnair.co.uk, does that load? Is that a website we can use? It looks like it is. And we can kind of do my booking. And we have a booking reference that we can put in here. And then the last name of uh, our target in this case is now we have a lot more information than we did before. We have a flag, so we know we're in the right direction. Uh, boarding time and all this stuff is kind of in the past. We already have the booking information, the name we do, arrival airport we do. But then we have a contact phone number. So we can also put this into the phone number. But it also looks like I forgot to grab the username here. So I'm going to go back and grab this username and put it in our data so we can put that here as well so now we have a phone number i think we do have what we need for our password we said with this postal code but i want to kind of make sure we have everything covered so i'm going to go back to the website and see what we find just based on this uh volno website it looks like we need telephone number and the postal code so let's try and plug this in really quickly i'm going to go in here uh we're going to start with our postcode which is this one. I'm gonna take the spaces out. I'm assuming they don't want the space in there. And then the phone number that we have right here. And there, we have gotten access to this person's mailbox. And if we go to 
uh, this right here, we can see it says, hey, uh, there's another flag. It's our fourth out of the fifth flag right here that says, hey, I reset your password uh, for the admin portal. The account is this. I try ringing you. You were away at the hall at the moment. So I'm assuming somewhere here is where we can get the password. And the clue here is that they have tried ringing us with the phone number that we have. So this is where things get a little interesting because now we have to figure out how do we get access to that voicemail? Well, we have the phone number and now we got to figure out how do we, maybe we can read this voicemail right here. This is where it gets really, really fun. We have a phone number. I'm going to assume it's a plus 44 for the UK. I have it right here on my phone. We're going to call it and I'm going to put it on speaker and see what we get. The person you are trying to reach cannot take your call at the moment. Usually, what you can do with this case is you can call the number and if you press pound or star, you get to get to the voicemail. Please don't ever use this for malicious purposes. This is for educational reasons. But for the sake of the CTF, I'm going to call this number and we do have a date, which I'm assuming it's not going to work, but press pound. That didn't work. So we're going to call it one more time. We're going to press star. So, so it looks like we can put a pin in. I'm going to try 1998 because that was the year the company was created. And it looks like our pin was incorrect. So we're going back to the drawing board. It looks like we need to find a pin code. A lot of times we're not going to use something easy guessable for our pin codes. Most people won't do it, hopefully, or hopefully you're not doing this if you're watching this. But let's look at the data that we have on the screen. We have no other information here. This is why we take notes to see kind of what stands out to us. The other thing that we haven't taken a look at is that this person's birth year was in 1977. That could be one we can use. We can also dig into this person's maybe birth month and day. Maybe we can look at the year they were married, things like that, and see if any of those works. I'm going to call this number one more time, and we're going to see if this birth year is going to be the answer. So we're going to push star. Now we do 1998. That should be wrong. We're going to call this number one more time. I just want to make sure that was on the code. We're going to start one more time. 1977. That was way too fast for me. But I want to stop the CTF here because now you're on the final stage of the CTF. I don't want to spoil it. You have to find one more domain. The hint for that is we give you a word list. You have a website gonna have to do a little bit of more hacking it's not OSINT. it's a little bit more hacking related but now you have a password you know where it goes to you just have to find the admin panel and it should be super easy to guess and see if that password works and log in i don't want to spoil that usually i stop here so i can kind of force you to do the ctf on your own and kind of do it to learn as well if you don't want to follow along you can just do it and try it out but anyways that was it i kind of wanted to do a ctf type osin challenge i don't know if you guys enjoy this kind of a content but let me know down in the comment i would love to hear from you guys and know that is this something that you guys want to see more of should i do more osin challenges should we just make more osin ctfs and where do we go from here all right that's it i will see you all in next week's video peace Okay, awkward. <laughs> You're still here. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and if you saw this, drop me in the homie in the comments. All right, see ya. Peace. Put this in the video.